today's lesson six, we are going to jump into style and understanding everything you need to know about style and style types. Let's take a look at our key learning objectives for this lesson. We start by understanding style and defining style. We look at the role that style plays within interior design. We define the characteristics within each style and look at how to implement them. And last but not least, we understand how to apply the style categories into your very own spaces. A very exciting lesson, but definitely a challenging one. So get ready for the ride. We start off with understanding the meaning of style to the interior design industry. What role does style play in this industry? To get to this point, we first need to understand the meaning behind style. So in order to get a meaning of style, we jump to the dictionary definition, which is a distinctive appearance typically determined by the principles according to which something has been designed. The word style comes into play in so many areas of our daily lives. It comes into play with fashion, in cooking, and in the general way we do things on a daily basis. This definition above of style is the same concept when it comes to the way in which we design our interior spaces. When we refer to style or the style of an interior space, it relates to a set of basic rules and guidelines and features grouped together to create a certain look or feel within that interior space. So remember in our lesson four, we looked at our principles and design elements. We saw that our elements were our ingredients and the principles of design were our equipment. The style in this instance would then be our cake. So our banana cake, our carrot cake, or our chocolate cake, it's the style of that cake. Each type of cake has its own set of guidelines when it comes to flavor and look and feel. The same concept is applied to interior design. Let's recap. Our ingredients are our design elements. The equipment is our design principles and the cake would be our style. Style is the artwork or finished product of the use of the principles and elements, which we've used in varying combinations to create a harmony of style. A really important question and one that I really like to tackle at this point, how did style come about? For as long as the interior design industry has been around, style has governed and mapped the way we as designers produce our work. With every era, we see styles come into life as they become popular or trendy. They then become mainstream of that particular era and then fade into the shadows as they become less trendy. During our history book of interior design, styles have also been divided into certain movements where lifestyle and culture and the daily lives affect or influence the style of that time. This is less about trend and more about the need and functionality of that style. As style progressed, so did the trend, which assisted in the rapid growth of style to this day. Due to the fact that style is governed by trend and popular demand, there are so many styles that have come and gone through the years. Not all of them have stood the test of time or trend. However, we see quite a few of these original styles within interior design and still learn about them and implement them to this day. So as we go through the rest of this lesson, take a look at some of the style types that we look at and see if you can spot them in your everyday lives. As we know, and as we've just learned, each style has its own set of characteristics and rules that make up that specific style. This is evident in the final product visually displayed within the space. In order to master a style and accurately project a style type into a space, we need to learn about these characteristics that make up each style group. By knowing these characteristics and how these principles are carried out in that particular style, we are able to get closer to achieving a well-designed space. When it comes to style, an important tip to remember, your style and your client's style may not be the same. Very important tip here, guys. This is why it is so imperative to study the characteristics of each of the styles so that you have a better idea of what style would suit your project based on the brief and based on the style that would best suit your client or space. As a designer, you need to remain objective to the style. Apply a style that is best suited to the project, not what your preference is on that particular day. 
With that being said, if you feel that the style your client is leaning towards is not suitable based on the design principles and elements, it is your responsibility to guide them in the right direction in order to create a well-designed space. Knowing the characteristics and guidelines of each style will help you to achieve a well-designed space. Now we know what style is and we know the importance of learning about the characteristics of each style group, let's take a look at the different style types most commonly used today. We start off with our mid-century modern, we then look at the modern style, we jump into contemporary, we then take a look at minimalist, classic style, and last but not least, our industrial style. So as I said, these are just a couple of the style types that we're going to look at in this lesson. There are so many more and so many that have developed through the years. In our history of design, we will look at styles like Rococo, Art Deco and your Victorian style, which have quite a big influence on the way these style types are governed. But don't worry, that will come towards your later lessons. As you know, I like to start off with a little bit of a scenario. In this lesson, we have Sophia's apartment. Sophia is our client and she has a townhouse in a booming coastal city. She has approached us, your interior designers, and wants to redesign her apartment as she thinks it's looking a little bit dated, but she wants to reuse some of her furniture. Let's take a look at her brief. Firstly, it's a small loft apartment, so therefore we need to maximize the space. She wants to make use of the exposed red brick on her walls. She would like to reuse some of her timber furniture items that are currently quite rough and untreated. She is a no clutter, no nonsense type of client. So no cluttery spaces, no finicky bits lying around. She doesn't particularly like bright colors except for a tiny bit of yellow. Her current furniture is vertical and horizontal lines, not many curved lines. As we work through each of our design styles, have a think at this brief as to which style you feel would best suit Sophia's apartment. Keep your answers and you can pop them into your Morpheus text box towards the end of this lesson to see if you are right. So our first style type we look at today is our mid-century modern style. Mid-century was a largely American and American popularized interior design style, which was brought to life by the designs of Florence Knoll and Arne Jacobson both of whom are prominent designers during this mid-century modern period. This was an era of Sputnik, of astronauts in space, of Eisenhower and the Twilight Zone, and the Jetsons. Can any of you remember the Jetsons? I have fond memories of the Jetsons. During this style, there was a movement towards futuristic shapes and materials which were used everywhere, from furniture to homes to multi-story buildings. This was due to the obsession around science fiction at the time. The booming post-war economy meant a rapid rise in the ownership of homes, which led to a surge of the construction of much smaller scale homes and developments. There was quite a popular message that was coined during this time between designers and architects, and this message was, design should not only be beautifully constructed, functional and efficient, but also something attainable. The mid-century modern style itself is quite a difficult term to define or explain. It broadly describes architecture, furniture and graphic design from the middle of the 20th century. Some of the characteristics we can see within the style are simplicity and clean lines. Clean lines and simple features were a key trait during this time. We also saw that furniture was stripped away from fuss and decoration. It was very plain, straight to the point furniture. We see a movement towards quality craftsmanship. Designers in this era took pride in their work and created pieces that would stand the test of time. That is why this is such a popular style, because we still strive for that aspect today. We see a lot of natural finishes within these furniture pieces, such as woods, teaks, etc. The natural beauty of your natural product was aspired to and prized. We then see within the furniture a lot of tapered legs and floating furniture. So using short legs and some extremely tapered legs created the sensation and feeling of something floating. This look characterized many mid-century modern pieces. We see the combination of natural and man-made materials. 
which allow designers to mix the traditional fabrics with your synthetic materials, such as fiberglass and plexiglass. We then see that geometric prints were popular in this time. Within the furniture accessories, we see a lot of sunburst designs and your boomerang designs. One of my favorite characteristics about this style was that they used a lot of bold color. So colors that might remind you of the 60s and 70s. The color palette of this mid-century era ranged from your deep hues, which would be your burnt umbers, your mustard yellows, your pumpkin orange, and your olive greens. They then also jumped onto your more bolder colors, such as your turquoise and your red, your whites and your blacks. Homes that were built in this period had lots of horizontal and strong lines. There was a favor towards natural light and open floor plans. They also had quite a strong sense of bringing your external in so the natural beauty being incorporated internally so let's take a look at this example of a mid-century modern interior and see if we can pinpoint any of the characteristics within the space that we've just covered right in this space i can see that there is simplicity and clean lines this is one of our characteristics we can see this in the furniture and in the general architecture and construction we can see that there's no fuss, so each furniture item performs a certain function and there's very little accessory or decor within the space. We can see that they've used lots of natural finishes such as timber. You can see that in the construction of the furniture, in your piano and on your floor. Can you see how they've used the tapered legs within the furniture to create that floating feeling? That's another one of our characteristics that we can see within this image. We can see that they have combined your natural and synthetic materials. So you've got natural materials on the floor and your synthetic materials in your carpet. We can see natural materials in the makeup of the furniture and synthetic as the fabric. And last but not least, and like I said, one of my favorite, we can see some of the use of bold color. So I'm getting quite a strong sense of that mustard yellow and that burnt umber. Your mid-century modern style brings some really iconic pieces from this era. So pieces that were born in this era are still used today. Can you name any of these furniture pieces that are on your screen? Firstly, we have the Eames Lounger. This is a lounger created by Herman Miller and still a chair widely used today. We then have the egg chair and we can see why it's called the egg chair because it's shaped as if it's holding an egg. And last but not least, we've got the womb chair. These pieces constitute a big part of the mid-century aesthetic story to date. Our next design style that we're going to look at is our modern style. It's a style that came into play in around about the 20th century. To be modern implies consistent change as something modern now may not be modern in five years time. That being said, the style modern has a strong focus on minimalism and clean lines and function within the space. It focuses on simplicity from material use right the way through to furniture and placement of objects within that space. A word that is commonly used to describe the modern style is sleek, and there is not a lot of clutter or accessories within the space. Each piece is placed with a function in mind as opposed to a decor and aesthetic appeal. Let's take a look at the characteristics of our modern style, the characteristics that make up the style group. Firstly, we see modern style has a very neutral color palette. A modern space is likely to feature neutral colors, polished surfaces and strong geometric shapes. Though some find modern style to be quite harsh or cold style, others tend to find it calming and appreciate the ability to maximize the space. So because it is calming and because it is very function orientated, it maximizes the smaller spaces. Our next characteristic is that it's a very uncluttered style. Furniture and objects within the spaces are kept to a minimum and rarely used to indicate the function. Our next characteristic is that it showcases very strong and clean lines. It has very few curved organic lines. As you can see, or as you would have probably picked up from our previous lessons, it's a very masculine style due to the lines that we are using. Remember when we spoke about line in our element section, this is a very clear indication that modern style is a masculine effect. In your modern style, a characteristic is the use of quite cold materials. 
Some of the typical materials found in this style would be glass, metal and steel. Our next characteristic of your modern style is that it is voluminous and space maximizing. Modern spaces tend to feel very spacious. This is because of the lack of clutter and the idea that the space needs to speak in a function rather than aesthetic and ornament appeal. Let's take a look at this example of a modern interior. Can any of you see the characteristics that we've just listed above within the space? For those of you who may be struggling, here are some of the key elements that you should have picked up. Firstly, it has a very natural color palette. We can see that we've used quite a lot of gray and white within the couch. You can see your strong horizontal and vertical lines in the furniture and the structure within the interior. It has very minimal objects lying around, so therefore it's no fuss. And we can see that the furniture pieces perform a function within the space. We can see the use of quite cold materials in the stone and the color in which the walls have been painted. And we can see that it is a volume maximizing space. So there's quite a lot of room within the space and that's created by all the finishes used. As you can see, it's a very masculine style, something that is taken front line of the modern style and something that has gained popularity over the last 10 years. Our next style and a style that I see generates quite a lot of interest is the style of contemporary. It is our contemporary style. Some may think that contemporary is just another word for modern or modernism. Well, in interior design, it's not. Contemporary differs from modern in that it describes the style or trendy look within the style at the present given moment. Whereas your modern style describes a specific style. So contemporary describes the modernism within that specific moment and modernism is a general style. Contemporary interior design is able to represent a sense of the now without having the strict guidelines of your modernism style. Contemporary styled interiors can use curved lines, whereas your modernism style cannot. Your contemporary style has less adherence to a particular style or particular guidelines. Contemporary interiors are comfortable and welcoming interiors. Let's take a look at some of the characteristics that make up the style. Firstly, we know that our contemporary spaces are comfortable living spaces. The focus is on function as well, but more on the inclusion of comfort as well as function within the style. We see the use of curved lines within the space. We still have our smooth and clean lines. There's some movement towards geometric shapes as these are essential in the structural furniture and the emphasis on basic shape and form. Some of the accents that we find in the style are graphic elements within the artwork. We notice occasional pops of bold color in the space. So as you can see in that image, there's a little bit of a bold pop of the blue in the background. Asymmetrical balance is a dominant feature within the style. So as we know from our principles and elements lesson, the asymmetrical balance is your more casual balance format. Can you see in this example how we can clearly see the use of a contemporary design? It has very similar features to the style of modernism in the strength of the lines and the cleanliness of the interior. We start to see our pops of color and our curved lines within the space. Just jumping back, are you thinking about Sophia's apartment? Do any of the styles so far hit any of her style briefing points? We have now covered our mid-century modern, our modernism, and our next style that we're going to look at is minimalist. What is a minimalist design style? Modern and contemporary are the stepping stones to minimalism. Minimalism embodies the less is more approach, so almost like a Zen feel. When it comes to minimalism, Everything is stripped down to achieve as much of a simplistic state as possible. Let's take a look at some of the characteristics of minimalism. Firstly, we see a drive towards the use of organic shapes. We see a less is more approach, less use of ornaments and fussy pieces. We see the focus on essential quality of the space rather than the objects that fill the space. Minimalism is ideally suited to large open spaces. With minimalism, natural light is cherished, which leads itself to the quality of the space again. Another characteristic here is the hidden storage. This is a characteristic that I love and try to bring in as much as I can in my current designs. It has cleverly hidden storage spaces. Let's take a look at an example of a minimalist space. 
Can you identify the common characteristics that we've just covered within the space? In the meantime, I'm going to help you out. Here are some of the characteristics I can see. Firstly, we see the use of organic form and organic lines within the couch. Can you see in the coffee table, it's got curved edges and it's more of an organic shape than a man-made shape. We see the focus on the essential quality of the space rather than the objects that fill the space. So we can see it's clearly laid out. The couch is there for sitting. You've got two side chairs for guests and a coffee table and that's it. It's a very minimal approach. We can clearly see that they've designed around the natural light within the space and to make the most out of that specific light. And then again, last but not least, can you see how cleverly they've hidden the storage behind the couch on the back wall and then behind the coffee table? It's neat, it's clean and it's totally hidden. No clutter. Before we carry on, I'd like to give you a little sneak peek into what you can expect for your next lesson. We're diving into color and how to render by hand. This is a very practical lesson again, and we will be using our styles and our perspective plans and drawings to apply what we've learned in the form of rendering and coloring. Very exciting and a hands-on lesson. But just a sneak peek, let's get back into our styles as we're going to need them for this lesson. Back on track with styles. Our next style we're going to look at is your classic style. The biggest focus and feature principle to this style is that it has order, symmetry and balance. Your classic style, interior design, originated from a European culture. Like the Victorian and Art Deco style, the Greek and the Roman style were also some of the main inspirations to this style. In a classically styled space, there's often, if not always, a feature focal point that everything radiates around. For example, your bed or a fireplace. It forms the center visual point. This is how visual balance is achieved. This style is all about elegance and classic design. The coloration within the style is the use of neutrals and definitely a strong movement towards natural material use within your fabrics and your flooring. You will also see a lot of timber flooring used, timber furniture pieces and stone marble tops. This generally creates a feeling of a welcoming atmosphere. Let's jump into some of the characteristics for a classic space. Firstly, your elements are arranged in a symmetrical and harmonious manner. These are the two key factors in the creation of a balanced and welcoming space. We then see the use of good quality materials, for example, oak, cherry, beech wood, mahogany, bronzes, marbles, etc. We then see a strong use towards columns and wall panel detailing, very reminiscent of the style. As we know, there is a very neutral color palette. The base colors are based on light and neutral tones. This is aimed in highlighting the kind of noble materials such as marble or the quality within the wood. In this style, your classic style, we see the use of accessories. So your more delicate and refined accessories. And then one of my favorite characteristics of this classic style, we see the use of artificial light sources. You see a lot of the use of crystal chandeliers, floor lamps, direct lighting and mood lighting, which adds to creating your welcoming atmosphere. Let's take a look at this example of a classically styled interior. Can you see some of the typical characteristics of classic design within this image? If you are unsure, here are some of the characteristics that I picked up. Firstly, it's balanced very symmetrically. We see the use of natural colors within the space. Yes, we do see a pop of blue, but your main color palette is natural. So your beiges, your whites, and your lighter tones. We see a strong use of artificial lighting. Can you see the chandelier within the space? You can see quite a lot of wall lamps and side lamps. And then I'm seeing quite a lot of refined detailing. So if you see all the detailing on your wall panels, the detailing above the bed, around your door frames, we are now jumping into a very exciting style, definitely one of my favorites. It's your industrial style. This is a style I work with regularly and something that is quite popular in the client base that I've got at the moment. So what is industrial style? I'm sure most of you have got an idea as it's really all in the name. Industrial style, as the name implies, draws inspiration from a factory or warehouse or urban loft kind of look and feel. 
Your industrial style is a very raw and unfinished style. You would see elements within the space that would be left exposed or in their natural state. For example, it would be quite common to see very exposed brick, so red brick or your typical um, gray brick work. And you would see quite a lot of exposed duct work, metal work, electrical cables and timber. Let's take a look at some of the common characteristics within your industrial style. So firstly, it's quite common to see high ceilings and exposed ceilings. We'd see a lot of exposed natural metals and timber, such as timber beams, ceiling trusses, metal pipework, copper piping, cabling, etc. In this style, we would see a lot of rough light fixtures, such as dangling metal light fixtures. You would also find the use of abstract art or quite a lot of feature pieces. This is just to bring a little bit of vibrancy to the space. Our next characteristic is that your color palette would be a natural and raw color palette. You would see the red from the brick and the black from your cabling and ceilings and then probably have quite a bit of copper or silver from the metal that we see, the exposed or rough metal. Timber would definitely be a feature piece within the style which would add to the color and the texture and the soft warm tones within the space. Here we have an example of an industrial interior space. This is, like I said, one of my most favorite styles within design as it's quite a flexible style and something that can be casual or quite chic. Can you see in this example how these characteristics have been implemented to the space? The industrial style characteristics. But if you're unsure, I'm going to show you what I can see. Firstly, I can see that the ceilings are much higher than usual. We can see that the, there's a concrete ceiling slab that was left exposed. We can also see the I-beams that are holding up the concrete ceiling. All the materials and natural finishes have been left exposed. Like I said, your concrete ceiling, your lighting cables and your lighting tracks. So although your exposed features have been neatened up, they are still exposed. So in your concrete um, ceiling, it's definitely been sanded down and sealed nicely. And your I-beams have definitely been painted, but it is still industrial because they have still been left exposed. In this example, I can see the use of rough and industrial lighting. It's been turned into a feature piece above your dining room table and then your track lighting in your main living room space. Can you see that the color scheme is also a natural and raw color palette? It's got very muted tones of gray from your concrete and your flooring. We have now covered six of the most common design styles to interior design. There are so many more, such as Scandinavian, Bohemian, traditional, nautical, and many more. But these are the ones that I've chosen and I feel will give you the best grounding in your interior design journey and through your projects. Are you able to tell me after looking at your style types, your mid-century modern, your modern, your minimalist, your contemporary and industrial and classic styles, which of these styles do you think would best suit Sophia's apartment brief? Let me take you through a quick brief recap. She would like to renovate her apartment to maximize the space. She would like to make use of more red brick and exposed ceilings. She doesn't want any clutter and would like a sense of casualness within the space. Her apartment is based in, this, in a factory space within a bustling city centre. What do you think the correct answer is? So on your screen, you've got your mid-century modern. We've got our industrial and our minimalist. Which of these do you think would best suit Sophia's apartment? Right, so if any of you guessed your industrial style, you are correct. Her style and her brief lends itself very nicely to an industrial style. That brings us to your challenge for today's lesson. Your challenge is to start looking around you and see if you can see any of these design styles that we've learned about within your spaces.